I N F Imminent! Napoleon Bonaparte is considered one of the greatest military commanders in history. Who's there? And his wars and campaigns are still studied at military schools worldwide. Retreating again? Just enough for the enemy that our opponents are confident. Take their position on the higher ground! It sounds so simple. It is simple. That's why they won't see it coming. Join us as we look at the simple reason why almost nobody could defeat Napoleon. 20. The Rise of Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte was a French military commander, politician, and emperor of the First French Empire. During the French Revolution, Napoleon served as a lieutenant colonel and led numerous wars. Napoleon Bonaparte's ascension began with the French Revolution. He served as the first consul of the French consulate from 1799 to 1804 and subsequently converted the consulate into the first French empire, ruling as emperor of France from 1804 to 1814. Napoleon's ascension transformed Europe's political structure. Once in power, he advocated for several liberal policies, including the elimination of feudalism, religious freedom, and the establishment of a central bank. Napoleon Bonaparte is regarded as both a great military commander and one of history's most divisive leaders. 19. Military Strategy Napoleon was one of the most brilliant military strategists in history. He expanded France's conquests beyond its revolutionary borders to become an empire that stretched from Spain to Russia's steppes. Napoleon's talent lay not in revolutionizing warfare itself, but in refining existing techniques. He did not suggest any radical modifications in tactics or establish a new technique of warfare. Rather, he excelled at tactically managing the troops of the late 18th and early 19th century. Napoleon distinguished himself as a great man's commander during the Revolutionary War with the Siege of Toulon and his victories in Italy in 1796. These abilities were honed and reached their peak during the battles of Ulm, Austerlitz, and Jena in 1805 and 1806. Toward the end of the empire, Napoleon's flaws as a military commander became clear. His obsession with micromanaging the army and granting martial batons to individuals who thrived under his leadership but had exceptional skill for solo command worked against him. The strategic errors of invading Spain and Russia, as well as the inability to keep the other major European countries divided, proved fatal. 18. Charismatic Leadership Revolutionary, skilled military strategist, fierce soldier, compelling speaker, and tyrant are all terms that may be used to describe the life of French Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. One thing is undeniable, Bonaparte was an exceptional leader. This Corsican-born soldier, who was mocked as a youngster for not being able to speak proper French, demonstrated fearless tenacity on the battlefield and an incredible capacity to lead people, allowing him to ascend to the position of Emperor of France at the age of 34. Napoleon, who was barely 5 feet 6 inches, was admired and feared throughout Europe during his reign. During his first combat as commanding general, one of his generals told a comrade, I don't know why, but the little bastard scares me. His leadership style was considered unconventional at the time, but today we can see that he possessed all the major and small attributes that define a brilliant leader. 17. Organizational Skills Napoleon won approximately 90% of his engagements, which is an impressive record for a coach, but unheard of for a military commander. Napoleon's main antagonist, the Duke of Wellington, was reportedly asked who was the finest general of his time. Wellington responded, In this age, past ages, or any age, Napoleon. Napoleon ruled continental Europe, establishing a legal, administrative, and educational framework that continues to influence governments around the world. Only a coalition of Britain, Prussia, Austria, and Russia could eventually vanquish him. What made Napoleon such a great leader? His excellent rapport with his troops, organizational skills, and ingenuity all played important roles. However, Napoleon's success was due to his ability to concentrate on a single goal. On the battlefield, Napoleon would concentrate his forces to strike a decisive blow. Napoleon, a product of the French Revolution, posed a direct danger to European tradition. As a result, great nations and empires formed alliances against him. However, Napoleon regularly took advantage of his greater rival's contradictory interests and aims. Unlike others, in battle, he refused to multitask. 16. Political Acumen 
Within three years of assuming power, Bonaparte had entirely rebuilt France. He established a powerful, centralized administration with a closely controlled bureaucracy. He created new parks, bridges, and quays on the Seine, as well as canals, reservoirs, and roadways. He established the Bank of France, which offered French businessmen credit at an affordable cost. Slowly, the economy recovered and prosperity returned to France. All of Europe was in awe. Bonaparte believed that by ruling, he embodied the spirit of the revolution, but he had no patience for people who desired more liberty. He silenced anybody who spoke out against him, destroying parliament and free elections. 15. First Consul On November 9, 1799, Napoleon and his supporters ousted the Directory in a coup d'etat, effectively terminating the Council of 500. Napoleon served as First Consul for 10 years, selecting two consuls with sole consultative powers. His power was confirmed by the New Year 8th Constitution which kept the semblance of a republic while establishing a dictatorship. The executive power was divided among three consuls, but as the first consul Bonaparte had all actual power and had no intention of joining an equal trio. As the years passed, he consolidated his own power as first consul, leaving the two other consuls and the assemblies weak and obedient. The constitution was modified twice, and each time the modifications consolidated Napoleon's already concentrated power. The 1802 Constitution established Napoleon as First Consul for life. In 1804, the year 12th Constitution established the First French Empire, with Napoleon Bonaparte as Emperor of France. The Constitution established the House of Bonaparte as France's imperial dynasty, making the throne hereditary to Napoleon's descendants. 14. Battle of Marengo The Battle of Marengo took place on June 14, 1800, between French forces led by First Consul Napoleon Bonaparte and Austrian forces near the city of Alessandria in Piedmont, Italy. Near the end of the day, the French defeated General Michael von Mellis's surprise attack, drove the Austrians out of Italy, and strengthened Bonaparte's political position in Paris as First Consul of France following his coup d'etat the previous November. The Battle of Marengo was the decisive victory in Bonaparte's Italian campaign of 1800, and it is best understood within that background. Bonaparte challenged Melas's lines of communication in northern Italy with a daring crossing of the Alps with his Army of the Reserve in mid-May 1800, practically before the passes opened. On June 2nd, the French army conquered Milan, followed by Pavia, Piacenza, and Stradella in Lombardy, cutting off Austria's major supply line eastward via the Po's south bank. Bonaparte wanted to leave for Paris quickly, so the next morning he dispatched Berthier on a surprise visit to Austrian headquarters. Within 24 hours of the battle, Melas initiated negotiations, which resulted in the Austrians abandoning northwestern Italy west of the Ticino and ceasing military activities in Italy. 13. Napoleonic Battles The Napoleonic Wars were a series of hostilities waged between Napoleon's First French Empire and several European coalitions. The wars were sparked by political forces stemming from the French Revolution and the French Revolutionary Wars, resulting in a period of French domination over continental Europe. The wars are divided into seven conflicts, five named after the coalitions that fought Napoleon and two named for their respective theaters. The wars had profound consequences on global history, including the spread of nationalism and liberalism, advancements in civil law, the rise of Britain as the world's foremost naval and economic power, the appearance of independence movements in Spanish America, and the subsequent decline of the Spanish and Portuguese empires, the fundamental reorganization of German and Italian territories into larger states, and the introduction of radically new methods of conducting warfare. Following the end of the Napoleonic Wars, the Congress of Vienna redrew Europe's borders, ushering in a period of relative peace that lasted until the Crimean War in 1853. 12. Napoleon Bonaparte Early Life Napoleon's family was of Italian heritage. His paternal ancestors, the Buonapartes, were descended from a minor Tuscan noble family that emigrated to Corsica in the 16th century, while his maternal grandparents, the Ramolinos, came from a minor Genoese noble family. Napoleon was baptized as a Catholic with the name Napoleon. Napoleon's youth was dominated by his mother's strict discipline, which kept a hyperactive child in check. Later in life, Napoleon stated, the future destiny of the child is always the work of the mother. His maternal grandmother married into the Swiss Fesch dynasty in her second marriage, and Napoleon's uncle, Cardinal Joseph Fesch, served as the Bonaparte family's guardian for several years. Napoleon's noble, relatively prosperous family gave him more possibilities to study than the average Corsican at the time. When Napoleon was nine years old, he went to the French mainland and enrolled at a religious school in Autun in January 1779. In May, he received a scholarship at a military academy in Brienne-le-Chateau. In his youth, 
He was an outspoken Corsican nationalist who advocated for the state's independence from France. Napoleon was frequently teased by his friends because of his accent, birthplace, diminutive stature, mannerisms, and inability to speak French rapidly. He grew reclusive and gloomy and devoted himself to literature. One tale related to Napoleon at school is that he led junior kids to victory over senior students in a snowball fight, demonstrating his leadership skills. After finishing his studies at Brienne in 1784, Napoleon was enrolled in the École Militaire in Paris. He trained to be an artillery officer, but when his father died, he was compelled to finish the two-year training in one year. He was the first Corsican to graduate from the École Militaire. In our thumbnail, we can see a young Napoleon commanding his troops on the battlefield as he yells out instructions. Napoleon has subsequently been acknowledged as a military genius and one of the greatest commanders in history. He fought almost 80 battles, losing only 11, the majority of which occurred at the end, when the French army was less dominant. 11. Battle of Waterloo The Battle of Waterloo took place on Sunday, June 18, 1815, near Waterloo, and marked the conclusion of the Napoleonic Wars. The Seventh Coalition's two troops destroyed a French force led by Napoleon. One of these was a British-led army commanded by the Duke of Wellington, which included units from the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Hanover, Brunswick, and Nassau. The other had three corps of the Prussian army led by Field Marshal Blücher. In France, the fight was referred to as the Fight of Mont-Saint-Jean. When Napoleon returned to power in March 1815, many of the powers that had previously opposed him formed the Seventh Coalition and quickly mobilized their forces. Wellington and Blücher's troops were cantoned on France's northern border. Napoleon intended to attack them separately before they could band together and invade France alongside the other members of the coalition. Waterloo was the final battle of the Waterloo Campaign and Napoleon's last. It was also the second bloodiest single-day fight of the Napoleonic Wars, following Borodino. According to Wellington, the combat was the nearest run thing you ever saw in your life. Napoleon abdicated four days later, and coalition forces reached Paris on July 7th. The defeat at Waterloo signaled the end of Napoleon's hundred days return from exile. It triggered Napoleon's second and final abdication as Emperor of France, therefore ending the First French Empire. It marked the transition from a series of European conflicts to decades of relative peace, which became known as the Pax Britannica. 10. Battle of Cape Finisterre Napoleon Bonaparte planned to invade England in 1805, and he devised a strategy that called for the use of the Franco-Spanish Navy, which was led by French Vice Admiral Villeneuve. However, on July 22, 1805, the Franco-Spanish force faced the British fleet near Cape Finisterre. Napoleon's intentions to invade England were called off after the British won this battle. Three months later, Vice Admiral Villeneuve opted to embark for Trafalgar with the combined fleet, citing the French Emperor's intentions to replace him. Unfortunately, the Franco-Spanish force stumbled across the British fleet, commanded by Vice Admiral Nelson, near the shore of Cape Trafalgar. The Franco-Spanish defeat at Trafalgar gave the British control of the oceans in the 19th century. For the French, this meant abandoning any plans to invade Britain. For the Spanish, however, this defeat resulted in a weakening of their fleet, which had ramifications for their economic and military activity, as well as authority over their American possessions. 9. Ulm Campaign The events of Ulm are commonly referred to be Napoleon's strategic maneuver to surround Ulm and the consequent capitulation of an Austrian force. While there were several skirmishes and small engagements during these events, no large-scale combat took place since the Austrians understood their situation was hopeless. Napoleon had assembled the majority of La Grande Armée on France's northern coast in preparation for an invasion of England. When he discovered that Austria and Russia had joined Britain's third coalition and were ready to invade France, he modified his intentions and ordered his army corps to march to the Rhine. With the French army concentrated around Ulm and the Austrians outnumbered, Napoleon demanded Ulm's capitulation. General Mack attempted to negotiate, not believing it was impossible if the Russians arrived soon, but the French realized the Russian army was too far away. Mack agreed to submit if no reinforcements attempted to rescue him by the 25th, but when he realized the situation was hopeless, he surrendered his entire force and the city on October 20th. Napoleon had won a major victory without a shot fired and just by better strategy. Mack and his surviving 27,000 soldiers marched out of the city, surrendering their arms in front of Napoleon and his officers. 8. Battle of Trafalgar the Battle of Trafalgar took place on October 21, 1805. The Battle of Trafalgar is one of the most well-known battles in British naval history. The fight took place between the British Royal Navy and the combined fleets of France and Spain. It occurred during the Napoleonic War when Napoleon Bonaparte and his army attempted to conquer Europe. 
27 ships commanded by Admiral Horatio Nelson faced a combined French-Spanish fleet of 33 ships led by French Vice Admiral Pierre-Charles de Villeneuve, which was attempting to return to the Mediterranean. Instead, Napoleon's fleet was so severely battered that it was effectively eliminated from the fight, ensuring British naval control of the waters. The French naval disaster was the conclusion of Napoleon's brazen, and ultimately unsuccessful, plan to invade and conquer Britain, his major enemy. Admiral Lord Nelson was already a national hero, but his death at Trafalgar marked his most famous triumph and ensured his legacy lives on to this day. 7. Peace of Amiens On March 27, 1802, signed a peace treaty in Amiens, France. The Treaty of Amiens brought an end to a nine-year-long war for Britain. The pact required Britain to return practically all the lands it had won during the war, except for Ceylon and Trinidad. Although many saw this as a reasonable price for peace, after such a protracted war, others believed it had squandered all of Britain's gains for very little return. There was also considerable skepticism in France's first consul, Napoleon Bonaparte. Many believed Napoleon was showing a predatory character that was incompatible with peace. They also said Napoleon was taking advantage of British Prime Minister Henry Addington's desire to make peace by demanding unreasonable concessions from a country that had not been completely crushed on the battlefield or at sea. 6. Battle of Pyramids The Battle of the Pyramids was fought on July 21, 1798, between the French army in Egypt led by Napoleon Bonaparte and local Mamluk forces. It was the first of many clashes during the Egyptian campaign in 1798 and 1799. Throughout the campaign, Napoleon demonstrated his vision and leadership abilities. It was during this conflict that he developed one of his most significant tactical innovations, the enormous divisional square. Although Napoleon stayed in Egypt for less than three years, he left behind scholars and artists who returned with countless relics, knowledge, and treasures to Europe. Ancient Egypt captivated the European imagination. Egypt, too, formed a bond with France and French culture that forever altered its cultural, social, and political life. Egypt later adopted the Napoleonic Code. The invasion marked the beginning of Egyptology as a subject of study. Napoleon's invasion of Egypt was probably certainly planned as a stepping stone for greater imperial expansion in the East, maybe with the goal of matching Alexander the Great's exploits. 5. Battle of Austerlitz The Battle of Austerlitz, commonly known as the Battle of the Three Emperors, was one of the most significant and decisive military battles of the Napoleonic Wars. The fight took place near Austerlitz in the Austrian Empire. About 158,000 troops were involved, with approximately 24,000 killed or injured. Military historians sometimes identify the battle as one of Napoleon's tactical masterpieces, ranking among major historical conflicts such as Cannae and Gaugamela. The military triumph of Napoleon's Grand Armée at Austerlitz and the French and Austrians signed the Peace Treaty of Pressburg later that month. These accomplishments did not result in a durable peace on the continent. Austerlitz had not persuaded Russia or Britain, whose soldiers had defended Sicily from a French assault, to settle. Meanwhile, Prussian resistance to the growing might of French military assaults in Central Europe sparked the War of the Fourth Coalition. 4. Russian Campaign Napoleon launched the French invasion of Russia, also known as the Russian Campaign, to compel the Russian Empire to comply with the United Kingdom's continental embargo. Napoleon's invasion of Russia is a well-studied event in military history and is regarded as one of the most devastating military operations ever undertaken. In less than six months, the campaign killed nearly a million soldiers and civilians. The military engine Napoleon the Artilleryman had built was ideal for fighting short, violent campaigns, but when a long-term concerted effort was in the works, it tended to reveal feet of clay. In the end, the logistics of the French military machine proved completely inadequate. Despite Napoleon's efforts, the French supply services were unprepared for Russia because of previous brief operations. There was no easy fix that could have corrected these shortcomings from one campaign to the next. The constraints of horse-drawn transportation, as well as the supporting road networks, were just inadequate. Napoleon marched his army into Russian territory, expecting an immediate French victory, but was met by ferocious, surprising withdrawals and repeated counterattacks by the Russian Imperial Army, resulting in a decisive Russian victory. 3. Battle of Eylau After decisively conquering Austrian and Russian soldiers during the 1805 campaign, French Emperor Napoleon established himself as the unchallenged master of Central Europe. Following a string of wins until 1806, Napoleon was brought to a halt in a fierce fight with the Russians at Eylau, the first serious standoff he had ever experienced. After a few days of pursuit, the French arrived at Eylau, where the Russians had gathered to fight. The French seized the settlement in a fierce, late battle, 
with severe casualties on both sides. The following day saw even more violent combat. Early in the conflict, Napoleon's frontal charge failed, resulting in disastrous losses. 2. Battle of Aspern Essling In the Battle of Aspern Essling, Napoleon crossed the Danube near Vienna, but the Austrians led by Archduke Charles assaulted and forced the French and their allies back across the river. It was Napoleon's first personal defeat in a major engagement, his first in 10 years since the Siege of Acre, and his first setback as head of state. Archduke Charles pushed the French out, but did not completely defeat their army. The Austrian artillery dominated the battlefield, firing 53,000 rounds versus 24,300 French. The French lost more than 20,000 troops, including Marshal Jean Lannes, one of Napoleon's most capable field commanders and closest friends. 1. Tomb of Napoleon Napoleon's tomb is a monument created at Les Invalides in Paris to house Napoleon's mortal remains after their repatriation to France from St. Helena in 1840, at the initiative of Louis-Philippe I and his minister Adolphe Thiers. While the tomb was planned in 1840, it was only completed two decades later and opened by Napoleon III on April 2, 1861, after its patron Louis-Philippe I, architect Louis Visconti, and key artists James Pradier and Pierre-Charles Samar all died in the meantime. Napoleon's tomb is in Paris, France. It's clear that Napoleon was an ambitious commander, but it did not prevent him from losing a few battles. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.